Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making this really fun whipped minty foot scrub. So you don't have to use this on your feet, but the inspiration for this project came from sort of the state of my feet in the summer because I really like going barefoot and when you go barefoot your feet get filthy and then filthy feet kind of tend to make for filthy floors and stuff. So, you know, I wanted my feet to like not be filthy and oftentimes, you know, a loofah and some body wash just really wasn't doing the trick. So that's where this stuff comes in. The consistency of this foot scrub is a lot like a whipped body butter, like a whipped sugar scrub, except part of the bulk of it is made of a surfactant paste using SCI, SLSA, and Amphosol CD or cocomide propyl baiting to create a soft squishy paste, which we sort of further um, give some structure to with some stearic acid and then some rice bran oil, some shea butter, and some glycerin, make it a little, a little easier on the skin. And all that comes together to give us a consistency that we can whip, which I think is so cool. The scrubby part of this whipped minty foot scrub comes from the inclusion of some jojoba beads, which are just teensy little bits of hydrogenated jojoba oil. And so they are not going to dissolve in the water that we have in this recipe. So you do need to use something that's not going to dissolve in the water that's in this recipe. So you can't use sugar or salt. You're going to want something like uh, powdered like walnut husk or pumice can work or of course the jojoba beads are also a good choice but yeah don't don't use sugar or something because yeah over time that's definitely just gonna like dissolve into the water in the recipe and it, not, not so good as always if you want to learn more about this recipe please go down to the description box below this video and click through to this recipe on my blog or go to humblebeeandme.com and search for the name of the recipe and it will pop up uh, there's always more information on the blog. There's also links to where you can buy all the ingredients. I've got a big bulleted list of different substitutions that you can make, or maybe that you shouldn't make, different notes on it, um, information on shelf life, on scaling. There's lots of really good stuff there. So chances are, if you have a question, I've probably already answered it on the blog. So please go read the blog. But yeah, let's get started. We're going to begin by melting together our base ingredients. So in here I have 25 grams of a pre-prepared paste of sodium cocoa isothionate and cocoa mitopropyl betaine. Uh, check the description box below for more details on this. And to that we are going to add 34 and a half grams of vegetable glycerin, 10 grams of stearic acid, 12 grams of rice bran oil, 10 grams of refined shea butter, and you could use unrefined if you want, and 7 grams of SLSA. And please take note, this is SLSA, not SLS. They are very different. Uh, SLSA is nowhere near as irritating as SLS. So again, please see the description box below or the blog post for more information. So now we're gonna melt everything together. So I'm popping this in a water bath. And this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that probably has about two inches or about six centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm gonna go pop this on the stove top over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through. So here we are, it's been about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, everything has melted through. Um, you'll probably want to give it a little bit of a stir, I find the shea butter tends to stay fairly solid in lumps and then you give it one stir and it just breaks up right away. So we can remove that from our water bath. And now we're going to add our distilled water. So you want about 9.75 grams of distilled water. Give that a bit of a gentle stir to incorporate. And now I'm going to leave this to set up before we come back and whip it. So it's been about an hour. I can see that this has set up really nicely and you can also see that I cut my finger open with a bread knife when I was making myself breakfast. So that's great. Uh, so let's give this a whipping. You can see that it has some structure to it now but it's not too, too solid. Let's get this bad boy all whippy. I've got my electric beaters here and let's give this a go. So now we're gonna weigh out some mica to make it kind of a minty green. Uh, so I've got this chartreuse sparks here from Yellow Bee. We're aiming for about a quarter of a gram. This is really just for, for decoration though, so it's not super, super essential that you nail that exact on the head. And then the mica is also optional, you don't need it. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this darker one from TKB Trading Cypress Green to uh, 
kind of get effect, roughly the effect I'm going for. You kind of tip that in there. So the reason I'm not putting the bowl on this scale is that it maxes out at 700 grams and uh, it's more than 700 grams. So if I put the bowl on there, it just sort of screams at me. It's like, oh, get that off me, it's so heavy. So we are doing everything into little prep cups instead. And let's give that another whipping and then we'll incorporate our essential oil and preservative. Well, that is not nearly as colorful as I want it to be, so I'm going to add some more mica. So now we're gonna add our essential oil, so we need one gram of peppermint essential oil and half a gram of liquid germal plus. Now we're going to weigh out our jojoba beads. So these are our exfoliant. I'm going to add three grams, but this is pretty customizable. And depending on the type of exfoliant that you're using, you might want to use more or less. Uh, that is up to you, or you don't have to, you don't have to use an exfoliant at all. So you can really see that consistency is pretty darn cool, really neat and whippy, and I've made versions of this uh, kind of for, for testing and recipe development purposes um, like, probably about two months ago, and they are still lovely and fluffy. But yeah, now we are ready to package this up. I'm going to be using this 100 gram plastic jar from Yellow Bee. They sell these in both black and white. So you want to sort of gently scoop the scrub in there. You don't wanna squish it too much. We'll put the rest in a 50 gram version of the same jar. It doesn't look like it's, see, it's not quite 100 grams, but it's not really quite 150 either. So it'd probably be a pretty good uh, place to use a four ounce jar if you have those. And before we wrap things up, I thought we would sort of take a look at how this works. We've got a bunch of extra on our beaters here. So this doesn't lather up a whole ton, but it does clean like really, really beautifully. Uh, so you can kind of get this awesome scrubby, minty, creamy thing going on, rinses off beautifully. And I found that it leaves my feet super, super clean. And there you go. You just made a gorgeous whipped minty foot scrub. This is the version we just made in the video. And then this is the one that I made for the blog. And you can probably guess I chose slightly different micas to get the slightly different colors going on. But yeah, you can see that this is pretty darn simple, really cool. And I think there's a lot of room to play with this idea. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please go down to the description box below this video to click through to this recipe on my blog where you'll find everything written out, links to all the ingredients, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and a whole lot more. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.